Okay, so it's time for my August wrap up talking about all the books that I read in August. And unfortunately, once again, I have to record this video early. <laughs> so it's gonna be another kind of chaotic wrap up where I'm going to talk about probably more than half of the books right now. And then I'll have to insert clips of me talking about other books. Y'all received that pretty well last time, so sorry. As for stats, I'll just put them on the screen because at this point I have no idea how it's going to go. I do know that the first half of the month has gone very well and I've enjoyed at least everything that I've read. So hopefully that trend will continue on. For my other stats, I know that I did primarily read adult this month and I did read a lot of fantasy, but also a lot of nonfiction and then a bunch of other random genres. So that feels good that I had a good variety in there. I'm trying to read more than just fantasy. I'm trying to branch out and read other genres because I do enjoy other genres. I just happen to really love fantasy. So, you know, we're working on it, guys. We're working on it. Speaking of this video being a bit of a modge podge, Let's talk about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is an all-in-one website designing platform. If you want to build your business, marketing, you wanna be a book blogger, pretty much anything, they're awesome for it. And I'm gonna talk about them a little bit more later in this video. I also wanna give a shout out to my current read, which is The Shining. I just started it, so I didn't get to finish it this month, but I'm already really enjoying it. I'm already loving being back into King's writing, and I will talk about it more uh, in a reading vlog, not this Monday, but next Monday, as well as in next month's wrap up. Sunday, my reading vlogs go up on Sundays now. So as always, I'm going to start with my lowest rated book and work my way up to the highest. And I'm going to start out maybe with my three stars. If not, here's a clip of a two star or a one star. So my first three star book is going to be The Adventures, The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, which I already talked in my classic wrap up. I'll link it up there if you haven't seen it yet. So since I've already discussed this, I'll just say that this story was interesting to read the entire way through, but also one that I could have easily accidentally quit reading at any point had I not been buddy reading it because it wasn't, it didn't make me want to keep picking it up. It was enjoyable. Glad I read it. Glad I know the original tale now, but you know, that's about all. Next we have Cracking the Relationship Code, which is another one that I've already talked about in my audiobooks that I narrated this month. This is a non-fiction, self-help sort of book, and the goal of this book, the way it's split up, is before you get married, before you get divorced, and before you quit your job, and it just kind of talks about finding contentment and enjoyment and fulfillment through yourself rather than relying on these outside forces, and as you find that contentment in yourself, you may find that you don't need to make such extreme changes in your life. It was a really good book. I enjoyed it a lot. It's it's a book that I would use as an add-on to other books in this genre as opposed to like the end-all be-all on this subject, but it was good. It was really short and I think that there were some good nuggets in it, so I recommend it. The next book I'm going to talk about is A Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet. So this is a sci-fi book and it is entirely about characters and world building. We follow a large cast of characters as they're on this crew, but really the point of this book is exploring the different species of aliens and their different cultures. And I loved the first half of this book because I love good world building and this book has great world building. And I really loved getting to know these different species and learning about their unique culture and and beliefs and and ways that they interact with each other and different things that they believe just in general the first the first half of this book was nothing but character develop, development and world building and i loved it the second half of the book was significantly more disappointing for me because we really never shifted out of that i love good world building and i love good character development but I need more than that personally to enjoy a story. And I think that what this author set out to do, she did, she accomplished. The things that she focused on and put a lot of emphasis on and cared about with her book, she did phenomenally. And the things that she chose not to focus on at all, 
were what let me down. I totally get why this is such a well-loved book and I think that if you love characters and you love world development and cultural, uh, cultural exploration um, and if that's the type of reader that you are and you don't need a plot to enjoy your book, pick up this book. Um, but if you're more like me where you really want plot along with those other things, I don't know how much you'll love it. I love the first half. I was tired of what this book was offering by the second half. I really think that the book for what it was doing could have been a lot shorter. Just not really a hit for me. I won't continue on with the series, but I get why people love it. It just wasn't for me. Next, I have How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age, which I think is just how to win friends and influence people, but it's been updated a little bit to include more technology um, and how to use technology a little bit more in this practice. Anyway, this is the one that my library had and it was really good. So this author's purpose with this book was really just to talk about how to focus all of your ambitions and the way that you try to pursue things in life through the lens of valuing the people around you and not just ambition trying to step on heads to get to the top, but how you'll be a much more successful person on the top if you've done it through relationship and valuing the people around you. I really enjoyed this book a lot. At its core, I agree with basically everything that this author said. I place a lot of value on the people in my life and do try to live each thing that I pursue. I try to live it through the lens of really valuing relationships and the people that I'm interacting with because people are extremely valuable. And living your life through the filter of I'm more valuable than the next person so I should look out for myself above everyone else isn't healthy. So he really just talks about refocusing your ambitions in life and pursuing those ambitions in business and in life in general and focusing that on valuing the people in front of you, loving them, and you'll actually be much more successful when you do it that way. Highly recommend this book. I really, really enjoyed it. The audiobook is great. I listened to it through audio and I'm really glad I read it. So popping back over here to talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Squarespace. So I love Squarespace. They are the one and only sponsors that I actually reached out to talk to, talk to because I needed to build a website and I already love their platform so much that I just wanted to work with them. Squarespace is so user friendly because they have pre-made templates that you can select from and build your own website by customizing things. They have customizable options like audio blocks, which work great for podcasting or iTunes tags, but what works perfect about them for me is the fact that I can put in samples of my audiobooks so that if I'm trying to work with an author or a publisher, they can go to my website and see how versatile my, my vocal ranges, my voices are, my narration styles for different genres. They have social sharing, so if you have multiple platforms that you want to promote, like your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, etc., it's all right there in a nifty little pre-made button so that people can click and it takes you right there. They have email mailing lists so that you can keep people up to date on everything that you need to do and send out targeted emails for the people that are interested in that sort of thing. And they have image blocks, which are great for me because I can show off my studio and I can show off me behind the mic, but they're also great for if you have a different kind of thing that you're trying to promote. Like for instance, my husband uses Squarespace for his photography and it's pretty perfect for him to be able to show off his own images. For sure, at least check out Squarespace. They're an awesome company that I have loved working with. Their customer service is amazing, so if you have any questions, they get back to you right away and they're super helpful. There is a link in the description, so be sure to use it. I really do highly recommend this company for sure. Next is the Aeronauts Windlass. This is my first Jim Butcher book. He also wrote The Dresden Files, which I think are a lot more popular here. Uh, but I haven't read them yet and I have read this and it was really good because this is such an easy but fun and engaging and well-crafted book. Jim Butcher's writing style is by no means meant to be complex or beautiful or lyrical or anything impressive. His writing is just so easy to read and digest and 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 just fly through and yet on top of that his story itself brings everything that you want a story to bring. It has, oh my gosh, his characters are so easy to latch onto. 
His world is really easy to wrap your head around, but big enough that it satisfies you if you like a lot of world building. It's, it's hard to describe this book because I want to describe it as just a really easy, fast, fun read. And that's true. But I also don't want to degrade it to just that because the story delivers what you want it to deliver as well. It's not just like, it's not just candy, even though it it is candy. You, do you know what I mean? It, ah, it's just, it's really good. <laughs> the entire way through I was entertained. I never wanted to put it down. I loved these characters. I loved the story I was following. I loved his writing. I loved pretty much everything about this book. The ending was who can't wait for book two. I just really had a good time with this. I definitely want to read more from this author and I definitely recommend it if you're in the mood for a fantasy, but you're not, you're not in the mood for a really complex, intricate, um, just difficult fantasy. You want something more chill, but with all the complexities that the harder ones bring, like this one, ah, uh, it's just, it's good. It's just, it was really good. Next book I'm going to talk about is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You That She's Sorry. This is by Frederick Bachman, who is a Swedish author. His works are translated. This is a book that was actually in my seasonal DNF video. Every season I make a DNF video where I talk about all the books that I did not finish, and then you guys vote on which book I'm going to pick back up in the following season and see all the way through. This was the book that won the poll, so I finished this book at the very end of the book, at the very end of the month, because I had already read the majority of the book. Um, not the majority. I had probably... Let me see where I left off. I quit here, so I didn't even have that much more to read, and Frederick Bachman's writing style is so easy for me to read and so immersive, and I love it so much. He's one of my favorite authors, if not my favorite author. And anyway, I'm really glad that you guys told me to finish this book because I, man, it was so worth pushing through. This is definitely my least favorite of his books so far. But as always, Bachman really explores um, deep, complex emotions strips them down, lays them bare in a way that I just think anyone could connect to. Um, and this was such a beautiful story that had me thinking so daggum much, especially in respect to, ah, ah, okay, this is spoiler free. Man, I need to just start reviewing pretty much every book that I read. Even though y'all don't watch my reviews nearly as much as my other videos, I just have so much to talk about and I need to just start reviewing books as soon as I finish them and y'all just have to deal with that. I related to this book so much and really, this book really made me see things in a different light than I would have without reading it. And it just, it, it has me thinking a lot and Bachman always does that to me, and I appreciate him so much for the way he's able to do that. Next, I have The, Con the Count of Monte Cristo, which I've already reviewed in my classics wrap-up, and I've already linked it in the corner, and it's in the description as well, so I won't talk much about this. What I'll say is that this was an epic tale with an extremely intricate story and a ton of characters with so much depth to them, and watching this good guy slowly and then very quickly fall into a really bad guy and all the intricacies that he lays out to plot his revenge was wild. Really recommend this classic. Next I have the fifth season which I've also already done a review for so I won't talk about too much here. I'll link the review in the corner in the description all the places. This book was a very, oh gosh, it, it's a very slow it's a very slow build, very character focused story that oh, that is so emotional and so incredibly well crafted. I really recommend checking, checking out my review. I have three pros, three cons, spoiler free, and then I kind of go into a little bit of spoilers, but you're warned ahead of time. If you're interested in this at all, I recommend checking out that review because it'll kind of give you an idea if this is something that'll interest you or not. I could definitely see this being a book that people wouldn't like, but I loved it and I am very excited to continue on with book two next month. Last book I'm talking about in the outdoors is The Wheel of Time book four, and I'm not gonna say a lot about it because I'm still not done with it. I have about 200 pages left and I'm filming this uh, like two days before the end of the month, so 
I should be able to read it. I just, I get why people say that this is the book where Robert Jordan really hits his stride and, and starts moving forward in the direction that he wants with the series because this book has been so good. I haven't read the ending yet, so I don't have a solid rating for it and I don't have like final summary thoughts. Also, this is the fourth book in the series, so there's not much to say other than that this book progressed the story so well and the characters, some of them are developing and some of them are continuing to digress in my ranking of my love for them. But in general, I am loving reading the story and I will have, once I finish the last few pages, I will record a review right on, right on the spot so that we can have my initial reactions again and initial thoughts. Um, and I will post that at some point next week. I'm really enjoying it and I'm loving talking to you guys about it as well. Last book I'm going to talk about, at least at this point in the video, who knows how I'm gonna order this in editing, but last book I'm going to talk about right now is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Wow, okay. I don't even wanna summarize this book because it's, uh, I don't want you to know too much. So all I'll say is what happens in the first couple of chapters. This guy wakes up, in his house, in his world, but everything's different. His house is redecorated, his voicemail is different, his wife, she ain't there. In fact, she doesn't exist, as far as he can tell. Oh, and he's been beat bloody. It's a thriller. Do you want to know more than that? Um, it is about, it's a book about interdimensional travel. Reality splits. And there's the you that made this choice and then there's the you that made that choice and they're different dimensions. It was so good. It's definitely, it's a thriller suspense novel, but it's also a little bit sci-fi. It definitely leans on scientific stuff to kind of rationalize how this world works. And I really appreciated that. I really felt like this book was so well thought out. There were so few instances where I read a scene and I thought, man, I wish this had gone a little bit further. I wish the characters had thought this through a little bit more or had been a little bit more resistant. Like there were so few instances where I would have slightly tweaked something. I really loved the way this author did pretty much everything. It was extremely well thought out. These characters are very, very smart. I have very few complaints and critiques and the few that I have, I will put in my Goodreads review with spoiler tags. Goodreads is always linked in the description. As a whole, I would say that the beginning of this book is a little bit slow, but once I hit about the 35, 40% mark, I think I read the rest of the book in like two days, which is which is big for me. I usually, like I'm not a one sitting kind of reader, um, but the rest of the book I flew through. I couldn't put down. I didn't want to put down. I stopped reading the other books that I was reading at the time so that I could wholly focus on Dark Matter. It was so good. <laughs> okay, so those are all the books that I read in the month of August. If you've read any of these, if you wanna read any of them, if you wanna chat with me about them more in the comments, please do. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys